Hey, this is Pastor Kevin Colley. Welcome to the Antioch YouTube channel. This is my message for Sunday, December 26, 2021. Good to have you here. Today's message for Sunday morning is God provides what you need when you need it. We're going to look at the scripture about the wise men, which is found in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. You're welcome to pause the video and turn to that scripture in Matthew 2 in your own Bible if you want to follow along and then press play on the video. Matthew 2, starting at verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for th thus it is written by the prophet, this is in Micah in the Old Testament. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me, that I may come and worship him also. Of course, King Herod had no intention of worshiping some other king besides himself. He had murder on his mind. When they had heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. So the wise men, the wise guys, brought gifts to Jesus. Have you ever thought what would have happened if it had been three wise women instead of three wise men? They would have asked for directions, arrived on time, helped deliver the baby, cleaned the stable, made a casserole, and brought practical gifts. What do you think? Sounds about right? I think so. The wise men were called magi, and they were most likely astrologers from Persia, who would have had royal status in their country kind of like spiritual advisors to the president. Like when the, the, the late Reverend Billy Graham used to meet with U.S. presidents to, to counsel them and to pray with them. Does that make sense? That's the Magi. That's the wise men. That was what the wise men from the East were in their own country. Now, why did they bring gifts? Well, we should imagine the gifts in the story as offerings of foreign dignitaries, just as diplomats from other countries often bring gifts representing their cultures. These wise men brought gifts specific to their own culture in the East. They honored the new king of the Jews in a way that fit their own nationality and culture. Each gift symbolizes an aspect of Jesus Christ. The gold suggests his royalty as King of the Jews and Lord of Lords. 
In the frankincense, they saw divinity. In the ancient Near Eastern world, people saw their prayers going up to the gods, like smoke rising up from burning frankincense, if that makes sense. The myrrh represented his humanity, and that to to the fullest extent because the, the, the myrrh suggests his death and burial. It was, uh, myrrh was used to embalm a corpse. So the myrrh refers to the crucifixion and burial of Jesus. So the, the gifts came to represent different aspects of the ministry of Jesus. Now, as I read this story again, what strikes me is that Mary and Joseph probably needed these three gifts a lot more than Jesus did, who would have been a toddler at this point. Mary and Joseph would have been near poverty. They weren't well-to-do. They weren't middle class, probably lower class, again, at the poverty level. So to be given these expensive gifts was a big deal. Mary and Joseph may have been running low on food and resources, thinking, you know, we're so happy with our newborn baby, but we're running low on food. And what is the number one thing that that modern married couples argue about? Money. And Mary and Joseph would have been no exception. So finally, at just the right time, not at the birth of Jesus, at the manger, but later on when they were at a house, these three strangers came and gave these expensive gifts to the Holy Family. Now, what's the point for us? What's the relevance for us? The point is, just like these three expensive gifts being brought to Mary and Joseph, just when they needed them. God knows what you need, and God will make sure that that you get what you need at just the right time. God provided for Mary and Joseph expensive gifts, not from their own family or friends, but by royal strangers from a foreign country, from Persia. And the point for us is that You never know how God will bless us. You never know how God will bless you. God has helped this church financially in many ways through people who are not currently a part of our church. They are strangers to me at least. You never know just how God will bless you. God will bless you through people that may be unexpected. Also, God provided for Mary and Joseph expensive gifts, not when Jesus was first born, like I said, but when he was a little older, maybe two or three. Why then, and not at the birth? Well, I don't know, but most likely that was when Mary and Joseph needed the gifts. The point is, God's timing is perfect. If you will, like Mary and Joseph, stay close to God, keep believing in him, keep loving him, keep doing your thing, living your life, being your best self, obeying God, worshiping God, then God will come through for you at just the right time. God is never too late and never too early. God knows what you need when you need it. God gave the wise men, the magi, everything that they needed to reach Mary and Joseph and Jesus. There was no GPS back then, no Google Maps, or perhaps not even a a, a, a physical map to unfold to get the magi from Persia to Bethlehem. So God provided a supernatural star which may have been a a conjunction of stars that that aligned in the sky at just the right time, creating a star-like effect. 
Science tells us what the star may have been. Whatever it was, it was a guiding light in the literal sense. It helped the wise men get to where they needed to go. What's the point for us? I'm glad you asked. The point for us is that God knows how to get you where you need to be in your life. God knows how to get you where you need to be in your life. For Moses, it was a burning bush. For the Magi, it was a guiding star. God led the Israelites and Moses through other supernatural means. God knows how to guide you to where you need to be in your life. If you will stay true to God and true to yourself, keep believing, keep praying, keep an open heart, open mind, open to God's guiding, then God may not give you a literal star in the sky, but you will have a star in your own heart guiding you to where you need to be, guiding you to the people you need to have in your life, guiding you away from the people that you shouldn't have in your life, guiding you to the experiences that you need for your life. We are coming into a new year, 2022. This year may be like this current year for us, or it may be a new chapter in your life. You and God are co-authoring your own story. And there is a, a guiding GPS in your heart, a star in your heart. We call it your conscience. We also call it the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Call it whatever you like, but it is a star. It is, it is a, an internal guiding system that you and I have as long as we are hooked up and connected to the Lord. When we sin and rebel and stray, our, our Wi-Fi connection to God is not so good. It's, it's, it's low bars, bad connection, no connection. No connection to God is dangerous. That was King Herod, no connection to God. He was your typical corrupt politician who cared only about himself and, and building up his legacy and enriching himself. And in the Christmas story in the Bible, it shows us that historically he didn't last too long. But God knows how to guide you. As long as you stay hooked up and connected to God, keep praying, keep believing, keep worshiping God, keep your heart open, your mind open, God will guide you. And God will provide for you when the Apostle Paul was under house arrest and he wrote his, his letter to the Philippian Christians. He said in Philippians 4.19, My God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He said that while he was under house arrest, basically imprisoned. If he had that positive attitude, while under house arrest, then you can have that positive faith attitude as well. When the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians, he said in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, in the New Living Translation, he said, God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. So, if you're a believer in Jesus, if you walk by faith, if you're a worshiper of God, if you're a friend, a Christian, if you're a giver, you extend yourself to others in some way, it will be given back to you, whatever you need. So the story of Epiphany, the story of the wise men, the Magi, is much, much more than just three kings, three, three Magi came, brought three gifts to Jesus. It's a story that means that God knows how to provide for you and I, us, his children, when we need it. 
All we have to do is imitate the example of Mary and Joseph, which doesn't mean going off to a tribe and being a missionary or giving a whole lot of money to some charity. It means you in your own simple life keep believing, keep obeying God in every area of your life. Keep praying, keep worshiping, keep loving people, keep putting yourself out there, being your best self, and the best, God's best, will come back to you. Thank you for watching. If you want to watch this live, you can tune in this Sunday, December 26, 2021. We will have the full service at 8.30 and 11 o'clock on two separate live Facebook videos. You can watch there. You can write in the comment section comments to me. You can share joys, uh, praise reports, or prayer requests in the comment section below. If you want to support our ministry, please go to www.antiochumc.info. Give your best gift by clicking that red donate button that will enable us to continue our ministry. Thanks again for watching. Merry Christmas, and may God richly bless you.